Welcome everyone. My name is Dr. Martinez and I'm here today with my team, Dr. Lerma and Dr. Raybon, and we're from the Archaeological Institute of Research from North America. We want to share with you the findings that we got from the remains of the Aztec goddess Tlali, who was the daughter of the god of rain Tlaloc. The reason we want to study her is because she was actually able to control any kind of fluid that contained at least 60% of water. To better understand her powers, we will be using biotransport phenomena equations to break down how she was able to use her powers for the good of her people. But first, let's listen to her story. At her 10 years of age, Estil was an intelligent and kind girl. She was loved by her family and friends and was always a helping hand in her house. However, her parents knew the tragedy that would come at month's end. Estil would have to be sacrificed to the god of rain and fertility, Tlaloc, who kept abundance in their lands and their crops, keeping them from famish and natural disasters that would come from his wrath. So back in the day, in the great cities of the Aztec Empire, the people would express their devotion to their gods by constructing palaces, temples, and plazas where they would worship their three main gods, Tlalcoatl, Huistilopochtli, and Tlaloc. So for example, Tlaloc, who was the god of the rain, would express his rod by causing floods, torrential rains, hurricanes that would instigate hunger in their people. The end of the month came by and Estil had to be sacrificed to the god of abundance. Her devastated parents took her to the hands of the priest who would take her life at the top of the pyramid. The girl was crying uncontrollably while she resisted the main priest. The village knew this was necessary for them to have crops to live, so they didn't object to this horror. So within the Aztec Empire, these sacrifices would be considered as something as beneficial towards the community. Tlaloc would take the children as sacrifices and the children's tears would be represented towards the bountiful harvest that the empire would have. Even the parents would consider these sacrifices as something as honorable. The other priests grabbed her limbs while the main priest prepared to extract her heart. As soon as the priest cut into her chest, the skies turned gray and roared. The priests had never experienced anything like this before. They were distracted and left the girl lying on the cold floor bleeding out. Suddenly, a light shone on her. She is the chosen one, the people said in astonishment, as they noticed how a rush of water crashed into her body, lifting her up in the air. Her eyes were lightened and her body went up to the skies. It was her destiny. She was in sacrifice. She had been gifted with the powers of who would now be her father, Tlaloc, the god of rain. As soon as she woke up from that trance, her skin turned green and her eyes a fiery red. She was a deity which her people would respect. As the prophecy said, the priest would teach her how to control her powers, which she would use to maintain abundance and balance in her village. She was now baptized as Tlali, daughter of Tlaloc, terrestrial goddess of abundance and water. For the next 10 years, she learned how to use her powers. She kept the crops watered, bringing food and sustainability for her people. So according to the legend, Tlali was given the power to control the flow of fluids in any living system. So if we want to model this as a momentum transfer equation, we would use, we would consider cylindrical coordinates and we would use the Navier-Stokes Navier equations in the R, theta, and C direction. So when it came to her controlling the flow of the fluid through the plants, because the flow goes upwards, we are, we are only going to consider in the theta and R direction. We're going to neglect the flow of the water in the C direction. Therefore, uh, we're going to say that our fluid is, has steady state and it's incompressible Newtonian fluid. We're also going to neglect the gravity because of the adhesive and cohesive properties of the water and we're also going to neglect the velocity in the C direction. So by doing that, we will be able to model our 
Navier Stoke Navier Stoke question in order to understand how the mechanisms of momentum transfer worked for her when she was trying to control her powers. When hard times came by, the Spaniard conquistadores came to take their lands. Tlali helped combat their troops and bring safety to civilians. She would send great storms to whoever dared to attack them. So within our research, we are trying to understand how exactly she was able to control these storms. So we're going to look at the heat transfer equation as well as momentum equation. Both of these systems can be considered in rectangular coordinate. The heat transfer mechanisms assumed are that there's going to be no conduction, only convection within the system. We can neglect metabolic rate and we can assume that there's only going to be temperature change within the y direction. So with the momentum transfer, some of the assumptions we can make are that it's going to be considered in the Y component, that the system would be considered as a Newtonian fluid as well as steady state, and that we can assume that there's going to be turbulent flow, as well as that we can assume that there's going to be symmetry within the system, and we can neglect wind within the system as well. As for gravity, her superpowers are going to be so strong that she can actually alter gravity, so that system is going to change as well. So as for now, within our studies, we have not found any relation between mass transfer and her superpowers, but within, hopefully within further studies, we can find a relationship between these two. Tlali lived for centuries and saved her people from the Spanish Empire. Temples and palaces in her honor still stand in old Aztec cities. Her body is now evidence and a focused study that will help us understand things that we never thought possible before.